Okay, so in this video we're going to start talking about minimums and maximums. So um, let's take a look at this picture here. Uh, we have a function y equals f of x, and here at negative 4, negative 1, uh, we have what's called a local minimum, and at negative 1, 2 is a local maximum, uh, and at 1, negative 2 is another local minimum. And this is actually also uh, what's called an absolute minimum. So um, this function, is, or the graph is not really to scale, but that's okay. Uh, we don't have to worry about that, I guess. Um, but anyway, so what does all this mean? Local max, local min, uh, another local min, and absolute min. So let's come down here. Um, a local or a relative minimum is basically less than or equal to all nearby points. So uh, first of all, local and relative mean exactly the same thing. They're completely interchangeable. So if you say local min or relative min, uh, it's exactly the same thing. Either one is fine. Um, and what do we mean by nearby points? Well, we'll talk about that soon. Um, so a local or a relative min is less than or equal to all the nearby points. And we kind of see that on the graph, right? So if we look at all the points nearby, uh, this is the smallest one. It's less than or equal to all the other ones um, nearby. And likewise with this one, uh, it's a local min. It's less than or equal to all the points nearby. Um, now a global or an absolute minimum is less than or equal to all the points on the entire function. Okay, So um, uh, again, global and absolute, they're completely interchangeable. They mean exactly the same thing. So you could say global min or absolute min. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. Um, whichever one you use is really up to you. It's just personal preference. Uh, for some reason, I prefer local, but then I prefer absolute. Um, I'm not really sure why. Maybe that's just how I learned it. But anyway, uh, local relative, same thing. Global absolute, same thing. And if we look at the picture here, um, we see that this negative 2, that's the smallest y value on the entire function. Okay, So uh, this is an absolute minimum right here. It's the absolute min because uh, it's smaller than, you know, it's, it's less than or equal to um, all the other points on the function. Okay, So likewise, uh, a local or a relative maximum is greater than or equal to all the nearby points. So again, we'll talk about what nearby means soon. Uh, but if we look at this picture, you know, if we look at all the points nearby, this is the largest one, right? It's greater than or equal to all the nearby points. So it's a local max. Um, and then likewise, a global or an absolute max is greater than or equal to all the points on the function. So um, this function actually has no global maximum, no absolute maximum, right? Because um, you know, no matter how big of a y value you find, you're always going to find a larger one. Okay, so here, the, you know, this arrow, that arrow, that means that the function keeps going up this way uh, forever without stopping. Same thing over here, it keeps going up this way forever without stopping. So uh, no matter how large of a y value you find, you can always just keep going to find a larger one. So there is no absolute or global maximum because um, you can have, you know, basically as large a value on the function as you want. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's straightforward for the most part, but now what do we talk about or let's talk about what we mean by uh, nearby. So this is just kind of an informal definition here. Um, let's be a little more formal with nearby. So uh, let's come up here and say, all right, let i be an open interval containing x equals c. All right, so uh, f of c is a local minimum of f if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in this interval i. All right, and f of c is a local maximum of f if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x and i. So these are more formal definitions here for local min and local max. Um, so let's think about this with the local min here. Uh, so we have an open interval i around our point x equals c, and f of c is a local min of f if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x and i. So in other words, what you do is you take your x value, so let's do this with this graph over here. Here's our x value of 1. So we're going to take a little open interval i containing x equals 1. So we're going to do this, and our c is going to be 1. So um, let's get rid of some of this clutter here. Oh, we'll get rid of this first. So what we're going to do is put a tiny little open interval around x equals 1. All right, and that's going to be your interval i. Okay, so here's our interval i. All right. Now, um, if f of 1, okay, remember c is 1. Okay, here's our c value, it's 1. So f of 1 is going to be a local min of f if f of 1 is less than or equal to f of x for all x in this interval i. Okay. So uh, let's zoom in on this here. Okay. So basically, we had this little open interval i around x equals 1. So let's drop this down to the function. Okay. So the x values in this interval, they all correspond to somewhere, you know, to some y values on this piece of the function here. And we do see that 
actually f of 1 really is less than or equal to uh, f of x for all x in this interval i. All right. So uh, any x value that you take in this interval, um, f of 1, which is negative 2, is always going to be less than or equal to f of x for any x value that you pick here. All right. So oops, for example, we could pick uh, this x value right here, whatever it may be. It's going to drop down to this uh, y value right here. All right. And uh, this y value, okay, so here, uh, negative 2 is less than or equal to, we, obviously it's less than, right, but it's less than or equal to uh, this y value here. So f of 1 is less than or equal to f of this value of x. Uh, and, you know, it's going to happen with any value of x that we pick in this interval. So um, just by the formal definition, this is a local min, okay, because we found this interval i here uh, that satisfies this definition, all right? So um, f of c is a local minimum of f if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x and i. So what's this i, you know, what, how do we pick that open interval? How do we know which interval to pick? Well, y you might not really know right away, but um, the point is, as long as you can find one open interval, no matter how large or how small, as long as you can find just one open interval that satisfies this uh, right here, then you're going to have a local min or local max if you're looking for that. So, you know, here... Um, this interval i satisfies that for us, right? So we're okay on that. So let's talk about the uh, local max here. So for local max, it's exactly the same thing, but now uh, f of c is greater than or equal to f of x instead of less than or equal to. Um, so let's get rid of this here. Yeah, we'll get rid of all this, uh, and we'll get rid of this interval here. So we'll just ignore that. So now um, our c value is negative 1. So we're going to do the same kind of stuff with c equals negative 1, all right? So um, let's take, let's zoom in first. And let's take this teeny tiny little open interval around negative 1 right here. So this will be our i. Okay, that's our interval i. That's our new interval. Remember, we're just ignoring this stuff over here. That's all done. So um, if we take any x value in this interval, it's going to correspond to somewhere up here on the function, right? Somewhere over here. Okay. So, uh, and we do see that, in fact, f of negative 1, which is 2, uh, f of negative 1 is, in fact, greater than or equal to f of x for all x in this interval i. Okay, so any value of x that we pick in this interval i, so here's our interval i, any value of x that we pick in here, uh, what's going to happen is f of negative 1 is going to be greater than or equal to f of x for any value of x that we pick, right? Because any value of x that we pick is going to put us somewhere on the function over here, right? And all of these are less than or equal to f of negative 1. So f of negative 1 is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in this interval i. All right, so again, um, how do we know how to choose i? Well, again, you know, we might not really know right away, but if you have a graph to look at, it, uh, it won't be too difficult to uh, see. So, for example, we don't want to pick too large of an interval i, so let's zoom back out a bit. Um, so, you know, this small i right here works just fine. Uh, we could also pick this i, right? If we made it this large, uh, that would also work just fine, right? So um, then all the x values would correspond to pieces over here, uh, like so. So that would be fine. Um, but if we pick i to be maybe this big, uh, so let's, that'll still stay over there, and let's say we pick i to be this big over here, um, then this endpoint corresponds to up here. So here, uh, if this is our interval i, that's too large, right? That's just too large of an interval, because these values of x over here, they correspond to y values up here, which are actually larger than 2. So for this interval i, uh, it's not going to work. This is actually not a local max for this interval i. But, you know, we've already seen that we can pick a small enough interval i so that we actually do see that this is a local max. All right, so that's, you know, kind of the point here. It's, it's a little bit tricky at first, but the more you think about it, the more sense it'll make. Um, this doesn't have to be true for every open interval i, right? You just have to find one. Just find one open interval i um, around this point x equals c so that uh, if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in that interval that you picked, uh, then you have a local min. And, you know, if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the interval, then you have a local max. So again, um, if you're looking at a graph, it's not too difficult to see how small i has to be. Um, and as long as you find just 1, it's okay. So um, same thing's going to happen here with negative 4, negative 1. Uh, so it's, it's going to be the exact same thing as when we did with x equals 1, so we won't go through that. It's just going to be the same thing. You know, pick an open interval i, uh, et cetera, et cetera, go through the definition, um, and you'll see that this is a local min. So it's the same thing as what happened here. 
All right, so that's uh, more of a theoretical background for local mins and local maxes. So what about global mins and global maxes? Well, they're a little more straightforward to deal with. So um, f of c is a global minimum of f if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. So, you know, it's not much more formal than what we said over here. Um, a local, or sorry, a global or an absolute min is less than or equal to all the points, right? So basically, um, a global min is just, you know, it happens at uh, x equals c if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. So it's basically just the smallest point. And we can clearly see from the graph here that this is the smallest, it's the lowest point on the graph, right? So this is the smallest y-coordinate, negative 2. So negative 2 is the local minimum value. Um, and it happens at x equals 1. So there is a difference between what the value is and where it occurs, and we'll talk about that soon. But anyway, um, just to be thorough here, uh, f of c is a global maximum of f if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. So, um, you know, it, it's pretty much just like this, but with greater than or equal to instead. So if, uh, you know, if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all the other x values, or, yeah, for all the other x values of the domain of f, um, then you have a global maximum. And we've already seen that this function doesn't have a global max because, you know, any value of y that you find on the function, you can always find a larger one, right? So, um, that's global mins and global maxes. Pretty straightforward. You know, as the name implies, global or absolute, so it's the absolute minimum value of the entire function, or globally, if you look at the entire thing globally, uh, it's the smallest value. Um, and same thing with max. So what's important to remember, though, is that these inequalities, they're not strict, right? For local min, it's less than or equal to. For local max, it's greater than or equal to. Uh, for global min, it's less than or equal to. For global max, it's greater than or equal to. So you want to remember that uh, they're not strict inequalities, right? So it doesn't have to be strictly less than or strictly greater than. Um, we'll talk more about that in later videos. But for now, um, let's talk about uh, how do we, you know, how do we talk about mins and maxes? So um, remember, we said there's a difference between what the value is and where it occurs. So you know, when we talk about mins and maxes, um, we're talking about minimum values of the function f of x or maximum values of the function f of x. So um, when we talk about f of x, you know, it's the same thing as y, right? So the values of the function, they're given by the y-coordinates. So the y-coordinates are the values of the function. Okay, so the min and max values, they are the y-coordinates. That's what they are. Uh, and they happen at the x-coordinates. So let's uh, make some room here. And if we want to describe um, min and max values, then we could say, uh, for example, for this function, uh, local min um, at x equals negative 4 is y equals negative 1. All right. So uh, local minimum at x equals negative 4 is y equals negative 1. So you want to be very careful. There is a difference between uh, what it is, which is the y-coordinate, and where it's at, which is the x-coordinate. Okay, so remember, the y-coordinate gives you the actual value of the function. Um, and likewise, there's a local min uh, at x equals 1, and it is y equals negative 2. So another local min, uh, local min at uh, x equals 1 is uh, y equals negative 2, right? Oops. Let's pull this up a bit. Um, and also, that's the absolute min, right? So uh, the absolute min happens at x, uh, at x equals 1, and it is y equals negative 2. Um, and the local max, you know, we could say, uh, just to be thorough, um, local max um, um, at x equals negative 1 is y equals 2 equals negative 1 is y equals 2. All right. So um, some people aren't really this uh, nitpicky about it, I guess. So some people, they like to say, um, you know, you could say a local min. So let's read that out. Local min uh, is negative 4, negative 1. So some people say it like that. It really depends on your instructor or who you talk to, I guess. Um, for me personally, I think it's best to be uh, ex as explicit as you can. So here you could say at x equals negative 4 is y equals negative 1. I mean, this technically isn't incorrect, but some people might not find that uh, an acceptable answer. So you do want to be careful about that. Um, but anyway, it's probably best just to be as thorough as you can or explicit, as, as explicit as you can and say it like this. So um, that's 
pretty much it for the first part of the intro to mins and maxes. Um, there is one more little tiny detail to talk about. So um, here, when we're talking about this open interval over here, uh, this interval i, because we have to have an open interval that contains x equals c, uh, what that means is that local mins and local maxes, they can't happen at endpoints. So if your function is only defined from like x equals a to x equals b, um, let's say like x equals 2 to x equals 5, then you can't have a local min at 2 and you can't have a local uh, max at 2 or at 5, right? Uh, no local mins or maxes at the endpoint because uh, you can't put an open interval around uh, an x value at an endpoint. So actually we'll talk more about that in uh, later videos, but um, that's just one thing I wanted to point out real quick. So that's pretty much it for this part of the intro. And uh, in the next video, we'll give a few more definitions and another example. And then the next few videos after that, some more examples. Um, and then we'll start talking about critical points and how they relate to this.